St. John Vianney gave a homily. One of the first things he said was, no priest, no mass. No priest, no sacraments. No priest, no church. The priesthood is essentially an instrument in the hand of God. Not one that he was forced to choose, but the one that he desired. And so a vocation is born by Christ choosing someone and lifting that man with his own consent into his hand. And it's an instrument that he never lets go of. So I recently read an article about a survey that was done at Georgetown University, and it found that the average age that young men discern a call to the priesthood is 16 years old. You know, we talk about a vocations crisis as if God has stopped calling people to the priesthood, but he hasn't. There's so much noise in the culture that it's very difficult, even for good young men who are pious and holy and searching, it's very difficult for them to hear that call. So if you have a college seminary, you have an opportunity for them to be in an environment that protects a vocation if there was one there. For a fruitful ministry in a diocese, we have to have healthy and, uh, and vibrant priest. The priesthood is one of the essential ways in which Christ fulfills his promise uh, to be with us always. And as Catholics, there's nothing greater than that. Priests are so important for bringing Christ to us. That's the way our Lord chose to extend his presence in this world. Canon law states that every bishop, insofar as he can, should have his own seminary, in particular the college seminary. And the reason for that is that a vocation is considered like a seed. It needs to be planted somewhere to be able to be cultivated, to be nurtured, to be protected, so that it might bring forth fruit. And that seed bed is what we call literally a seminary, That's what a seminary means. And so when a young man has the opportunity to throw himself at our Lord in that courageous movement at 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, the idea is to protect that vocation. Priesthood, of course, is a special calling and it requires a special intellectual and human and spiritual formation. The dream is to be able to have a priest in every parish and our parishes are growing and so it is essential that we form young men to be ready to take up their places in the parishes when the time comes. The first step in building a good priest is to build the man. You can't have the priest if you don't have the foundation. The foundation upon which that grace is given is the man. One learns to be a priest by being with priests, by watching them, by shadowing them, and being formed. To be a man of God, you have to be a man. And that means virtue. They have to be a, a man of virtue. We teach what it's like to live a virtuous life. We have all heard Christ's words speaking about leaven or yeast, in which something so small becomes so large, like a mustard seed. But to see it in action has been astounding, even for us. So in just three years, we have 24 men in the seminary. So the need now that we have to build is essential. So we keep moving forward, and the next stage is then to be providing a place for them where they can all be together and uh, undergo their formation together. What sets us apart is principally because we are priests of our own diocese, serving our own seminarians. These are our sons and one day they will be our brothers. We are living with, you are working with, you are praying with, you are eating with the men that will be your brothers for the rest of your life. It's very familial. Who are the priests that are going to serve my grandchildren? Are they going to be good holy Catholic priests, formed well, educated well? You know, are they going to be the ones that help get my grandchildren to heaven? I sure hope so. You know, and, and that's, that's worth getting involved over. I asked the Lord what, in what way I can follow Him to Calvary so I can die on the cross with Him. And He answered that prayer, and particularly during Mass, where I saw that the priest walks with our Lord and lays his life down during every sacrifice of the Mass. When I was in high school, I didn't really have like a big aha moment about going to seminary or the priesthood, but I thought about it a lot throughout high school and just kind of felt this constant pull or this constant desire to go. I wasn't so sure how to do it though because there wasn't a seminary in the diocese. God willing, I am ordained. I am looking forward to being 
that mediator, the intercessor for the people to bring them to God and then to bring God to them through the sacrifice of the Mass, bringing them the Most Holy Eucharist and then through confession bringing them back to God. Again, I was asking all these questions, what is the point of being a man? A man has to sacrifice himself. What will I sacrifice myself for? And as I started answering these questions, I realized that, that I wanted to sacrifice myself for the Gospel, that I wanted to be able to bring our Lord to other people. This merciful Lord that had mercy on me, I wanted to be able to give it to others. As a kid, I just wanted to go into medicine, and I, I feel like it was because I just wanted to help people. You know, what a better way to help people than bringing Christ to them. These are going to be our future priests, our future shepherds who are going to guide the flock. And um, no matter how big or small, um, whatever you can afford, we all have an obligation to help them in some way and to be a part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. St. John Paul II, he once said, the future of vocations is in God's hands, but it's also in our hands as well. Without the priest, the Eucharist is no more. And therefore, the, the priest is something that, whose importance couldn't really be overstated simply by God's designs. This is something really big for the future, not only of the Diocese of Charlotte, but for the future of Catholicism in the South and throughout the country. From an investment standpoint, it's an eternal investment and it's well worth it. 